Albert Berger is a busy retiree, not even quadruple bypass surgery three years ago or a pacemaker the following year could slow him down. You know, I'm, I'm active. I don't sit and, and watch TV. I, I like to do things. His old boss tells him, don't get up on the roof. <laughs> he says, I know you like to do everything yourself. He fixes everything himself. But recently, Albert has developed another heart problem, an abnormal rhythm in the upper chamber of his heart that could lead to a stroke. Some patients have these arrhythmias in the lower chamber of the heart, a common cause of sudden death. Abnormal heart rhythms, interestingly, are one of the biggest health problems in the United States of America. Most lay people would uh, notice abnormal heart rhythms as palpitations or skipped heartbeats. And, and it turns out that sometimes uh, heartbeats can be felt as slow heartbeats, and there are times when this leads to a fluttering in the chest. Today, doctors will fix the flutter in Albert's heart with the latest in 21st century technology. These are the wires we use to treat arrhythmias. We thread this into the heart. There was a time when some of these arrhythmias required uh, medications and in some cases the only definitive treatment option was actual surgery where the chest had to be cracked open. But today Dr. Shiv Kumar and his team at UCLA use a catheterization technique called ablation. They thread tiny wires through the arteries in the neck and groin directly into the heart. Each electrode sends a signal, and what emerges is an unprecedented picture of the electrical circuitry of Albert's heart, allowing doctors to locate the hapless heartbeat itself. What electrical wires allow us to do is, it allows us to get a road map of the abnormal heart rhythm. In some ways, uh, a good analogy would be uh, an abnormal heart rhythm could be envisioned as, uh, say, an electrical train that goes around a toy train circuit. Travels in a circle around the tricuspid valve. And what the electrical wires allows us to do is, it's able to measure electrical activity in various parts of the track. A specific spot. And basically, in this case, what he had was an abnormal electrical circuit around which the electrical impulse, which is the toy train analogy which we talked about, was going around almost at 260 times each minute around a region of the right upper chamber of his heart. Dr. Shiv Kumar then uses the same electrical wires to reroute the track and restore a normal beat to Albert's heart. What the electrical current that does in the heart is at the point where the electrical wires touch the heart, when we apply an electrical current just under the region of the catheter in a very tiny area which is just a few millimeters in diameter. In that area you have heating and that heat does a very focused uh, removal and damage to tissues which are causing abnormal electrical impulses. Just the abnormal tissues of the heart are removed from the electrical circuit and in some of these cases it results in a cure for life. The heartbeat is only beating once every second now instead of three or four times each second. UCLA has a very exciting group and we are one of the few programs in the nation which is a completely integrated arrhythmia program and the UCLA Cardiac Arrhythmia Center was established almost five years ago uh, by the David Geffen School of Medicine primarily to bring together specialists uh, in diverse areas of expertise targeted toward a single goal which is to generate new knowledge about abnormal heart rhythms. And I completely envision someday where we will be able to get this information uh, using non-invasive means just from outside the body. And there are already technologies where you could focus energy sources into the heart to cure abnormal rhythms. Someday we will be able to do all this without even having to thread an electrical wire into a patient. Sounds like science fiction, but uh, it's, it's going to happen. and. Uh, we completely envision ourselves being a part of such a transformation of this field. It's amazing what you can do without cutting you open again. I feel great right now. I'm ready for a steak dinner. And that, that's, that's an hour and a half after the operation or the procedure. <laughs> this was targeted 
mapped and cured during a procedure which took about two hours and uh, we expect that he has a 90% chance of having a complete cure. In fact, he went home the same day. He is uh, looking forward to uh, being with his family and playing with his uh, grandchildren.